Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. This week I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and making some jewellery, which is something I don't do very often, but I had a brand new set of coloured UV resins from Let's Resin, so I wanted to have a go with them and I thought they were best suited to jewellery. So to accompany my coloured UV resin, I will be using some aquacast in some of the pieces today and also some pressed flowers to create a brooch and some pendants and keychains. If that sounds like your kind of thing, stay tuned and enjoy the video. As I don't make jewellery very often, I didn't really have any suitable moulds. So I had a look on Amazon and I came across this set. It's a set of two moulds and it also has the findings with it as well. So if you're new to making jewellery, this is a good kit for you because you don't have to go out and buy all the different bits to go with it. So with this part of the mould, as you can see, there's two different sides. One side is for casting some inserts, which once cured will go into the other side to finish off your pendants. So I was quite intrigued by that one and I decided to use that one first. To make my inserts, I've mixed up a small amount of aquacast and that's a casting compound from Elichem Resins. You don't have to use that, you could actually use resin for that for the insert, so it's up to you really, but I decided to use the aquacast. Because there's a lot of detail on this part of the mould, I had to be quite careful to make sure I didn't get pockets of air trapped in there. So I'm using a wooden skewer just to manipulate the aquacast around the aperture to, you know, make sure that every part's been touched and there's no little bubbles trapped in there. So I took my time with it and did it very gradually, then gave it a bit of a bang. Then I repeated the process for the other three inserts and I left it to cure for about an hour. I wanted it to be nice and strong before I tried to take it out of the mould. Right then, after the inserts were cured, I took them out of the mould. Three of them I've already put into the empty pieces of the mould, but there's this one left to do which I just need to pop in and then we're ready for the UV resin. I must apologise for the focus in the video this week because I keep showing you things close up. My camera was getting really confused about where it was focusing so sometimes it goes a little bit blurry but oh, I've tried to avoid it as much as possible. Right then, now it's time to test out my coloured UV resin from Let's Resin. For the first one, I'm using lake green and blue. The kit comes with 12 colours, so there's lots to choose from. Each bottle contains 20 grams of the UV resin. So yeah, you get, what, 240 grams overall in this kit. Now, with the first one, I wasn't sure if the UV resin would be trying to seep underneath my insert and how obviously I didn't want it to. So I was holding it down while I added the UV resin. But uh, yeah, I got tired of doing that and for the others I didn't. But this was my first attempt and I didn't really know what I was doing with it. So yeah. Bear with me. I've added the late green first and then to the other empty part I'm going to add the blue with the hope that they will merge together. Now this is just the first layer. It's very shallow because when you're using coloured UV resin the UV light needs to be able to penetrate to get through and cure it so it does take longer to cure it and it's very important not to pour it too deep because you will have problems so even though this pendant seems quite small I'm doing it in three layers of UV resin. So once I'd finished applying it, I cured it under the UV lamp for two minutes. It's going to be going under the UV lamp quite a lot 
for the other layers and for the other pendants. So I didn't worry too much about doing it for four or five minutes, which I think is recommended on the box. It will get that while I'm doing the others, if that makes sense. Right, once that first layer was cured and the insert was in place and I didn't need to worry about the resin going underneath, my hands were free and now you can actually see it. <laughs> so yeah, I just did the same thing again um, another two times. So yeah, and you can see the colours are beautiful, aren't they? Not too dark, and which is important as well. That's another thing. Like I said, when, when there's colour in there, it takes longer to cure. And if there's too much pigment in there and it's very dark colours, it won't cure very well at all, which is why all these colours are quite pale, but they are beautiful at the same time. I really do like these two colours together. So once that was in, I used my little um, lighter, what, what do you call it? It's a lighter on a long, oh, I don't know. It's like a lighter. <laughs> the flame on the lighter will get rid of the micro bubbles. So there we go. And yeah, I won't show you everything. It's just the same process three times for each one. So for the second one, I decided to use purple and pink purple. I'm trying to get through as many of the colours I can to find out what they're all like. <laughs> so I thought these two would go nicely together and it's exactly the same thing again. For the third one, it's just a little one, so I decided to just use one colour and this one is caramel, which I really like actually. It's like... Well, how would you describe it? Maybe like a peachy orange colour. I really like it. Uh, I think, you know, when, when they were all finished, that one was actually my favourite. But I'm not sure. We'll see. I can't, I can't decide which is my favourite. But I do think they looked really good. And for the last one, I used peach and yellow. I wasn't, wasn't really sure whether that was a good idea for a colour combination, but it actually turned out really eye-catching and I was glad I took the gamble with that one. It did look good. And as you can see, I'm struggling there. It's not wanting to stay against the sides. I kind of knew before I did this last one that I was going to have to do some sanding when it came out, but you'll see that in a moment. Now, while you're watching this one, let me tell you about one of my mistakes that I made. Now, as you know, at the beginning, I used Aquacast for the inserts. And one, what I should have done, once it had, you know, fully cured and dried out, was sealed it, um, but I didn't seal it. I thought I would get away with it, but I didn't get away with it because what you will see when I show you these finished and close up is the dampness that was still coming out of the Aquacast casting compound caused some bubbles in the UV resin. And yeah, that was my mistake. I shouldn't have been lazy. I should have sealed them first. So yeah, when you see the bubbles in there at the end, it's not a problem with the UV resin. It's my mistake causing those bubbles <laughs> right for my last layer i think i made the layer a bit too deep and you can see what's happened there it's overheated a little bit and it's overflowed that so that's another reason why you shouldn't really do it too deep when you're doing each layer and yeah <laughs> as you can see it needs a little bit of saving but it's nothing that a piece of sandpaper can't you know sort out and there's the one that i was saying i really like they all look really good actually they just need a little bit of attention let's look at the blue one so these are all going to have a top coat as well of clear resin just to finish them off but i really like that one and finally the pink and purple And there we have it, look. I don't know if you can see the um, imperfections in there because of my damp aquacast. <laughs> but they were there, believe me, they were there. So do make sure you seal it if you use aquacast or any other kind of eco resin. Right then. 
So here with this close-up, you'll have seen the bubbles I was talking about and also the edges where it's just seeped over, you know, in the mould, it seeped into where the aquacast layer was and I wasn't happy with that, so I decided to sand it. I'm just using an emery board here and that's about 180 to 200 grit. Yeah, it's two-sided, so one side's 180, one side's 200. That's kind of where you want to be with your sandpaper. Don't worry too much about leaving any scratches on there because when we add our final layer of resin around the edges and the top and the bottom, you won't see any scratches. So now let's finish it off. I've finished the sanding on all the different pieces and I'm going to use some clear UV resin on the edges first. And as you can see, I've just applied a small amount on one side and I'm going to use my gloved finger just to smear it all around the edges very carefully just to make sure it's all nice and smooth. Then I held it under my UV lamp for two minutes while it cured and I just kept moving it around so all sides were getting all the light that they needed. Then I applied more clear UV resin to the top and then manipulated it to the edges so it's just a little puddle in the middle. Move it to the edges with a micro brush or something similar until it's nice and neat and then cure that. So the clear UV resin I'm using is from J Diction and um, yeah that's the one I use quite a lot. I didn't have any of the Let's Resin clear resin so even though this is a Let's Resin video yeah I'm not going to lie the clear resin is from J Diction. <laughs> Right, I'll show you all the finished pieces very soon and also add some of the findings to actually make them into jewellery. But for now, I wanted to show you what I did with the other part of the mould set. I decided to use pressed flowers in these ones and I had a set of pressed flowers waiting to be opened from Let's Resin so that worked out well. So the set from Let's Resin has many, many pressed flowers in it all different shades packed in separate packets so that the different color schemes are kept separate and there are some really pretty flowers in there however there are also some artificially colored flowers and i don't know about you but it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine i really don't like artificially coloured flowers. A lot of them look very natural but some of them don't and yeah I'm not going to lie I'm sorry let's resin but I don't like it when flowers are dyed. Nature does a beautiful job of colouring the, the flowers all by itself. It Please don't help it it doesn't need the help. <laughs> anyway I've chosen some flowers which kind of looked natural i still don't think they all were but yeah some of them were but yeah i'm not sure about the pink ones i do like them though those ones get just about past the test and yeah those are what i chose i was really pleased that the kit also had plenty of foliage in there because you really need the foliage with the flowers to make it look natural once I'd chosen the flowers for my first pendant, I needed to choose my background colour. Here you can see I got a piece of card and put a um, small drop of all the different coloured UV resins on there so that I had a reference card and I decided to use the green. So for this first one, I wanted the green as the background. I didn't want the flowers immersed inside the green. Um, so I made a bit of a mistake actually. I decided to put the green um, UV resin in there and cure it for about 20 seconds so that it wasn't fully cured but it was still tacky and that the flowers wouldn't sink. And I, yeah, I thought that was a really good idea. It didn't actually work very well. It caused a few problems. So yeah, don't do what I do, do what, what I say. <laughs> 
yeah, don't do what I've done on this first one. It turned out not bad, but it ended up with some really big bubbles in there. And I think it's because of what I did, you know, with only curing it a little bit. Anyway, I'm getting rid of the micro bubbles here before curing it for 20 seconds and then adding the flowers. It's all a little bit fiddly, so I used my tweezers. If I wasn't wearing gloves, I would have probably managed a bit better just using my fingers. But yeah, I kept my gloves on. And yeah, it's just a case because it's tacky, they stuck into position quite well without sinking. But you'll see how that one turns out later. We've already talked about what happened. <laughs> anyway, once the flowers were in position, I added a layer of um, clear UV resin to fill it up. And then that one was done. After learning from the mistakes of the first one, I decided to do the second one differently. I got my flowers ready again and this time I decided to use some of the gold leaf that came with the pressed flower set. So I just took one flake out with my tweezers and then added the layer of caramel coloured um, UV resin on top of that and then just swished it all around so it broke up into lots of little pieces. You don't have to do that, you could just leave it in one big piece if you wanted. But I wanted lots of little flakes and the easiest way to do it is to swish it around once it's inside the UV resin. And then after removing the micro bubbles with my lighter, I just added the flowers. For the first one, I sunk it down to the bottom so that it was completely submerged. And then I added the rest so it was just floating on the top. Much simpler than the technique I used on the first one and it worked far, far better. I did one more in just the same way with yellow resin, um, UV resin and then it was ready to take them out. So let's have a little look at how they're looking. So as you can see the edges need a slight tidy up with my nail file but this one works really well just submerging the flowers as you just saw me do and it looks nice and clear no problems with that one. Next we have the yellow one with the daisy and that one looks really nice too. Sorry about my dog barking in the background. So yeah, I like that one. And here's the first one that had the bubbles in and that was because I didn't cure fully cure that first layer. I thought I was being clever but I wasn't. Once all the pendants were complete, it was time to make them into jewellery. For this first one, I decided to use an eyelet screw and I made a pilot hole for it with my little drill from Let's Resin and then just screwed in the eyelet. Once that was in place, I added two jump rings and then I was ready for the necklace um, cord, I suppose you would call it. And that's what came with the mould kit. So that was nice and handy to have that to instantly be able to make a necklace. Another fixing option is to use the pinch bales that come with the mould kit in that little bag of findings that I showed you. Uh, yeah, the only thing is the pendants are very deep and thick and I had to really open up that pinch bale quite far so that I could thread it through the holes. And once it was in position, I gave it a good squeeze to make sure it was nice and secure. Sorry again for the blurriness here. You'll see it really well in a moment or two. Right then, this one was a bit of a funny shape I found for making a necklace. I could have done it uh, with maybe uh, one of those screw eyelets in each of the top two corners and done it that way. But I was thinking maybe a brooch would be better. And I did have some of these um, brooch backing things whatever you would call them you can tell I'm not a jewellery maker can't you I don't know the names for everything <laughs> but anyway I had one of those in my jewellery kit and decided to use UV resin to attach it into place so I just took my clear UV resin and made a little splodge <laughs> on there I go again with my technical terminology I'm so good at it aren't I <laughs> I put a splodge on the back and then just put the brooch onto brooch backing 
on top and squeezed the resin through and then realised I didn't have any gloves on. So then I went and got a glove and put that on. <laughs> um yeah and straightened it up and then i put more uv resin over the top and yeah that's it basically then i cured it and it was ready okay let's have a look at them all finished so this one was the one where i used the necklace that came with the mold kits and then on this one i used a silver chain and i like that one i think that one's really pretty beautiful colors and then what's next ah the brooch now yeah i like that actually i love the colors it's not perfect none of the things i made are actually perfect but i think it looks good enough to wear don't you very nice and a key ring there's the key ring and yeah i love the colors from let's resin i think I'm very happy with those. It was just my workmanship that was at fault a little bit, really. But I would definitely recommend the Let's Resin UV Resin for the range of colours which are just beautiful. That one, I don't know what that one's going to be yet. So that's why there's nothing on it. Oh, and the last one is a key ring. I like that. I think these the size of these do work well for key rings. Well, we've reached the end of the video. It turned out to be a lot longer than I expected, <laughs> but I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me a lot. And subscribe if you would like to, if you haven't already done so. And I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.